Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we're going to circle back on a case that we've already talked about, done a little bit more geeking out on it, and it's got me a lot more worried, and I want to kind of geek out with you about it, get you all educated so that you can understand a very, and I do mean very dangerous legal theory kicking around in courts that are favoring civilian disarmament and how it can be used to have catastrophic and I do mean catastrophic implications on all of our inalienable rights. So today, let's spend a few minutes, let's slow it down, let's get you educated, and let's talk about, so maybe this is how they will disarm all of us. Okay, so the case we're talking about again today is Rocky Mountain Gun Owners v. Polis. Now, we already did this video right here, and this is a challenge to Colorado's newly enacted three-day waiting periods. I mean, why would anybody ever need to have access to a firearm immediately? Of course, waiting periods save lives and they never cost lives. Because as I mentioned, who would actually need a gun right away? Unless, of course, you happen to be a Jewish American in the year 2023. But I digress. Now, what we know about these civilian disarmament courts, that is courts that are really never seen a piece of gun control legislation that they didn't absolutely adore, is that this pesky little Bruin test announced by the United States Supreme Court last summer, well, that's a real problem because once we get to the first inquiry, which is, does the plain text of the Second Amendment cover this activity, then if the answer is yes, the government has to justify the regulation by coming up with some historical analog that shows that we as a society have accepted those types of regulations and restrictions placed upon us. The problem, of course, is, is that when they get to that second part, they are rarely, if ever, able to find historical analogs. Now, there have been some gun control pieces of legislation which have been historically justified, and I do stand by my prediction that the matter of the United States v. Rahimi, Mr. Rahimi will lose part of that argument on the fact that we have long since accepted historically the tradition of banning firearms from those individuals we deem to be dangerous. But when there is no historical justification whatsoever, such as waiting periods. We didn't have waiting periods in the late 1700s. We didn't have waiting periods in the mid 1800s. We didn't have waiting periods until most recent time. So what do you do if you are a judge who wants to uphold a piece of gun control legislation, but there's no history to back it up? That's right. What you do is you say, well, you know what? We don't even get to the second part of the test because the plain text of the Second Amendment does not cover this activity and the inquiry and the gun control law stands. Let me introduce you to the Honorable John L. Kane of Colorado's United States District Court, who upheld last week Colorado's three-day waiting period on the simple theory that the Second Amendment does not protect the right to secure or procure or accumulate a firearm. It does not give you the right to purchase a firearm. It does not give you the right to acquire a firearm. It only gives you the right to keep and bear a firearm, but there is no guarantee that you can lawfully obtain one. The judge himself says that the constitutional amendment says the right to keep and bear arms. It says absolutely nothing about purchase, acquire, or accumulate. The court specifically ruled, from this reading of the plain text, it is clear the relevant conduct impacted by the waiting period, the receipt of a paid for firearm without delay, is not covered. Still, plaintiffs attempt to equate the words obtain and possess, but these terms are not equivalent. To keep under the definition provided in Heller meant to retain an object one already possessed. It did not mean to receive a newly paid for item, and it certainly did not mean to receive that item without delay. Likewise, having weapons indicates weapons are already in one's possession, not that one is receiving them. But you see, this little evil trick here will then preclude a court from having to go through the historical analysis, or worse yet, preclude the United States government from even having to justify those laws. Because instead, the court just says, hey, there's no constitutional deficiency. Second Amendment doesn't cover this activity. We're done. End of story. See you later. 
But this ruling is not unique to the state of Colorado just recently. Let us remember what Judge George Yu in California of the United States District Court ruled there in relation to a challenge on homemade or personally made or unserialized firearms. Though it leads with the recognition of the primacy of Bruin's plain text point, the plaintiff seeks in its opening brief to jump ahead in the analysis to a historical tradition assessment and to jump ahead in Bruin to that decision's discussion of how to conduct such an assessment. But it has effectively attempted to avoid the necessary threshold consideration, does the Second Amendment's plain text cover the issue here? No, it plainly does not. Assembly Bill 1621 has nothing to do with keeping or bearing arms. And with that determination, he was able to quickly brush aside the challenge to California's uh, unserialized firearm challenges and never had to engage in any kind of analysis, nor did he ever force the state of California to justify this regulation. Many have expressed concerns that the lower courts around the country continue to struggle with what is historically analogous in order to justify gun control legislation. Now we know case law says you do not need a historical identical twin, but those courts which are hell bent on supporting civilian disarmament struggle mightily to find the proper history. And oftentimes that's because that history does not exist. How then can they possibly continue to uphold these gun laws under the Bruin test? Well, it's simple. Don't really get into the Bruin test simply make a finding that the Second Amendment's plain text does not cover the activity that's in question here, and that's the end of the inquiry. And at that point, no state or federal government will ever have to justify the legitimacy of that gun control legislation. Now, here's the big concern, and this is why we said, hey, this is how they can disarm all of us. What prevents, especially blue states, from passing all sorts of restrictions on the sale of firearms. You could limit the hours, you could limit the locations. You could put state licensing fees on there that were so exorbitant that most, if not all people could not afford it. Under the analysis that's, that's being offered by these types of judges here, they would all say there is no Second Amendment implications whatsoever. The Second Amendment guarantees your right to keep and bear arm. It does not guarantee your right to lawfully acquire, obtain, or purchase a firearm. So everyone around the United States here, we're going to have to very carefully watch this argument because one of the easiest ways to uphold civilian disarmament legislation is to continuously find that the legislation doesn't implicate the Second Amendment. The case, once again, is Rocky Mountain Gun Owners v. Polis. We'll link it up for you down below so you can geek out on it for yourself and read the judge's reasoning for yourself. In the meantime, if you got any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is down there in the description box. Now, let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.